Hello and welcome. You're watching Money, Money, Money. I'm Samara Abdi. We speak very often about the debt market on this show. So what exactly is it? Well, debt instruments, also known as fixed income instruments, include the humble fixed deposits, the corporate deposits, government securities, corporate bonds, PPF, EPF, NSC, and so on and so forth, and of course, debt mutual funds as well. Well, the perception generally is that debt instruments are safe or less risky, and that's not really unfounded. But today, Hemant Rustagi of Wise Invest Advisors joins in to tell us how to actually make the most of our debt portfolios, and also Vanisha Daswani and Jagruti Pandit join in today as well. But Hemant, I want to ask you that, uh, you know, debt portfolio or debt uh, products rather have this perception perception that they're there for wealth preservation, you know, not really wealth creation. So as, uh, you know, critical as that might be to a portfolio, is there really a case to be made for the bank FD? I know the finance minister is, you know, given that push uh, to rev the savings engine, but is there really a case to be made for, you know, something like a bank FD or a PPF? Well, so you know, the interesting thing is that uh, when we talk about, let's say, an asset class like equity, only 3 to 4 percent of our investors invest in that asset class, mm. which means the remaining 96 to 97 percent invest in debt portfolio. But the problem is that, you know, every investor who invests in debt looks at only one aspect. You know, the perception is that when you're investing in debt, the portfolio has to be absolutely safe. Mm. So when they look for safety, they straight away go into look, investing in bank deposits or in you know, a small saving uh, instruments. The problem there is that these instruments give you guaranteed return, but the returns are low, and many most of these you know products, barring uh, exceptions like uh, provident fund or public provident fund, the returns are also tax free. So your post tax return go even lower, mm. which means that when you're investing, even with a time horizon of 10 years or 15 years, you fail to beat inflation. That's true, actually, Hemant, you know, because often the return is closer to 8%. If the latest inflation reading is anything to go by, it's getting closer to 8%. So, you know, it's very natural that an investor might think, why I even need to look at products like this? But what about debt mutual funds? Do you think that offers any scope, especially in a scenario where interest rates could be heading lower? You know, whenever we talk about mutual fund, the perception is that, oh, mutual funds are risky. Because, one, they believe that mutual fund invests only in equity. Mm. But the fact is that there are a variety of funds available from mutual fund. There are short-term funds, there are income funds, there are fixed maturity plans, there are debt-oriented hybrid funds. Now, what these funds do is, because they are market-linked, of course, there is some amount of risk that you take. Because whenever you're investing in any product where it is the returns are market-linked, there is going to be a volatility. But if you invest with a clear time horizon, with clear objective in mind, I think you can tackle volatility. What would be the gu guidelines for such? You know, some uh, investor is novice, he does not understand anything. So what can be the guidelines? How does he choose this? Well, I think the important factor clearly is your time horizon. Okay. Now, you know, you may have money for a few months that you just want to put it aside. The obvious option that you have today is go to the bank deposit or put it in the same bank account. Mm -hmm. The same bank account generally will give you four and a half, five percent return, yeah. and there also you end up paying, uh, you know, uh, tax on that. So if you're in thirty percent bracket, you're left with maybe three percent or thereabout. Sure. So if you're looking at short-term parking, the mutual fund offer you options like you have liquid funds, you have ultra short-term income fund. These are ideal if your time horizon is, let's say, few months. Is there any exit load or something there? We, normally these you know, short-term funds, where the, which are meant for parking of, of money, they don't have exit load. Okay. The next is, let's say if your time horizon is 6 months or 12 months or thereabout, you have short-term income fund. So, you know, the important factor you need to understand as an investor is, the major differentiator between different kind of debt fund is the maturity duration of their portfolio. Okay. Now that, which means, what is the average maturity of their portfolio? If it's a short-term fund, it will have maybe one, one and a half year. Now, that maturity duration should match with your time horizon. Okay, well, I have a question is that when investors are putting in their money, how do they decide that should they opt for the dividend option, is it the growth option, reinvestment option, what, how do they know which one is for them? Well, you know, if you, if you plan your investment, I think this decision becomes a little easier. Now, for example, if I decide first, I decide my asset allocation, that okay, 50% of my money will go into debt. Then I decide my time horizon. Of course, I have a goal attached to this. Mm. So if my goal is that, okay, I want to buy a car three years from now, and obviously I can't go into equity because equity, despite the fact that everyone is talking about good potential, can be volatile, can mm. be risky. I will not go into equity. I'll go into some debt fund or debt-oriented hybrid fund. Now, my objective is to 
create a corpus for buying a car. Mm. So obviously by taking out dividend, okay, I, I will actually not achieve that objective. So right. clearly I should go in for growth. Second, if your time horizon is a little longer, now as per the revised rule, three years or more, then you should go for dividend uh, growth. The point is because you, are, you get long-term capital gain benefit, which is taxed at 20%, mm. and you can claim indexation. indexation. So practically, considering that in our country inflation is generally high, you end up paying hardly any tax. So I think mm. it clearly depends on your time horizon, your requirement, and, and these two factors will decide, and of course your requirement, whether you should go for dividend or growth. Just one more question. You know, if you invest into PPF, you, the interest is always higher, it's more secure, and you can always take a loan against it. But when it comes to the mutual funds where you have put in or parked your funds, how can that help? Like if you have to evaluate between the two. Well, you know, you, you need to compare apple with apples. Okay. You're talking about a product where you're going to keep money for 15 years. Yeah, minimum. Okay. And loan also you can only take after a certain after period. After one year. Yes, or exactly. Year or something. Exactly. But even if you look at 15 year product, yeah. now if you're going to compare it, first thing is you have capped your return. Okay. Broadly. Now, you know what is happening is every year in the month of March, the government announces what is going to be the rate for a small savings scheme for the next year. Yeah. So you're not very sure as to what you're going to get. But generally, the variation is not going to be much. But this return you get when you keep money for 15 years. Now, if you're going to compare that return with a short-term fund, which has a time horizon of one or two years, I don't think it's, it's fair. If you're looking at 15 years, then you should go into, if you don't want to go into equity, since we are talking about debt here, and if you're looking at debt-oriented hybrid fund, which has some exposure to you know equity, you can get much higher return. I mean, if you look at their performance, what they have done over the last 10, 15 years, some of the funds can give you easily double-digit return. All right. On that note, we need to take a very quick break. We'll come back in a bit. On the other side, we'll tell you if all debt instruments are safe, and also what is the other option that you can take if you don't want to invest in debt. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a bit. Welcome back. You're watching Money, Money, Money. Hemant Rastagi of Wise Invest Advisors has been telling us how to maximize our debt portfolios. And also Vanisha Daswani and Jagruti Pandit are with us helping me quiz Hemant. But Hemant, uh, we've been talking about how debt instruments are so safe and all that and more. But is every debt instrument equally safe? Do you think corporate FDs would at least uh, you know, be carrying the risk of default, at least some of them? Yes, of course. I mean, you know, when you talk about there are different kind of deposits that you have. You have if you look at bank deposits, obviously they are, they are much safer. But if you look at corporate deposit, clearly you are taking a risk. The kind of risk that you are taking is, one, you are giving lump sum money to one single entity. Second is you need to look at what is the rating of that mm. company. Now what happened these instruments? It's not the company which is rated, but the instrument which is rated. Now when you look at a rating which is not very good, very high, you will see that the interest offered by that FD is much higher mm. compared to another FD which the rating is higher. Now you need to decide, okay, you need to create a balance between risk and reward. And how do you do that? Again, as we discussed earlier, when you talk about debt portfolio, obviously there has to be some amount, some element of safety into it. So corporate deposit definitely have a potential to give you higher return. But of course, there is a commensurate risk there because, like I said, you're putting all your money into one entity. Even uh, companies which are rated well, very often we find that the rating agency, you know, all it takes is one default and the rating will come crashing down. And if I've already invested in that, I have no choice but to go with the so. Well, absolutely. I mean, see, that is the risk that you always take. Uh, that's why I always believe that, you know, for, for individual investors, whether you're H&I investor or you're, you know, retail investor, I think it makes sense to look at a diversified vehicle like mutual fund. Mm. And the reason for that is one, you have a diversified portfolio. I mean, you invest, let's say, 50,000 rupees in a fund, you get a basket of securities and of different maturities. And the best thing is that you have a professional fund manager managing your money. Mm. He has an entire team tracking mm. all these securities. So, as you mentioned, you know, there is a change in the rating. As an individual investor, you may not even be aware of it. Yeah. But here is a team of professionals who keep track. So, the moment they see that there is something happening for a particular security. They have the wherewithal to keep a track and also exit from there. Whereas in the fixed deposit, like you are stuck. You know, mm -hmm. If you have taken one year FD, something goes wrong in between, you are stuck there. So I think that's why 
investors need to look at you know flexible and you know and, and transparent vehicle like mutual fund what are these arbitrage funds i've heard about them recently what are they exactly like as compared to a debt fund uh, what exactly how do you make more money in that well you know uh, arbitrage fund actually is it's not a debt fund you know maybe it's as safe as a debt fund because of the way it functions the way it invests because of its investment philosophy but it's actually an equity fund see what typically happens in an arbitrage fund and why they have come into limelight now especially after the union budget because of change in the tax rule uh, since these are considered as an equity fund right you after one year the long term capital gain is tax free the dividend that they pay is, is tax free but why are we saying that they are akin to a debt fund is because what they try and do is they try and generate return from you by looking at you know taking advantage of arbitrage opportunities that exist between cash market and derivative markets because they do not take open position in the equity market they don't expose you to any kind of risk and that's why they get the benefit of equity fund taxation generally the the return in these one will you know vary between 7 to 9% mm -hmm. it depends on the kind of arbitrage opportunity which exists in the market mm -hmm. in a volatile market there are more opportunities in a rising market sometimes the fund manager uh, you know may struggle to give you the return but the fact that these are equity funds from taxation point of view and it's a it's a tax free return it makes sense to definitely include them in the portfolio and what you should do is you know if you have a time horizon of let's say less than 1 year mm -hmm. you must have a time horizon of minimum 3 years in these funds do not use them like liquid funds because most of these funds will have exit load for the first 3 months so if you take out your money after let's say one one month and you end up paying half a percent exit load your 6% annualized return mm -hmm. has gone in that so don't do that mm -hmm. but these are also not great investment opportunity for a long term investment so if you have two or three year money these are not ideal these are ideal for up to one year investment and if you actually decide to invest in these funds go for a dividend option because these are equity funds by definition mm -hmm. so that dividend is tax free so if you take out your money after 6 months you, you would have got 6 monthly dividend mm -hmm. so there will be hardly any capital gain mm -hmm. because the the short term capital gain is tax at 15% in equity fund you can even escape that uh -huh. so it's important to choose the right fund and also choose the right mm -hmm. strategy to make it more tax efficient him and the other thing that uh, uh, you know where debt instruments are very very helpful is especially if someone wants to generate regular income so in that sense which is the best product uh, you know for someone who's looking to have income say monthly or quarterly well you know so where our life has become a bit difficult for mm. those guys who want regular income especially from mutual fund product see what has happened is the debt funds have to pay a dividend distribution tax mm. uh, now which is 28% for individuals and okay now what has happened in in the union budget 2014-15 uh, there is again change in the tax rule here uh, earlier the dvt was being paid on the net amount now right. it has to be paid on the gross, gross amount which means you have to pay maybe couple of percentage point higher now the problem is that if you are in a high, higher tax bracket of 20 mm. and 30% you you end up paying practically the same amount of tax that you would pay in a, a traditional option like bank's fixed deposit mm. okay but what do you do now you want regular income okay and you don't want to pay tax well thankfully there is a strategy that you can adopt provided you start in well in time if you are at a phase where you want to accumulate your money mm. and then generate regular income for you so decide the fund maybe you can go into a debt fund or maybe you can go into a debt oriented hybrid fund accumulate your money over the years once you complete three year period it will become a long term capital gain mm. as i mentioned earlier when you claim indexation you hardly pay any tax mm. then you should opt for something called systematic withdrawal plan now what it does for you is that you give a mandate to the to the mutual fund that every month i would require let's say 10000 rupees mm. so what the fund will do is they will you know redeem your units equivalent to 10000 rupees and start paying you on a regular basis so what you've done is you have kind of made, made it more tax efficient for you and you're more certain about how much money you want and you will certainly get that every month so this is the strategy that you need to adopt especially when you're investing in product like mutual funds
All right. Well, the more I hear, the more I'm convinced that debt instruments are really the cornerstone of someone's portfolio, at least someone you know who's planned it for the long term. But uh, Vanisha Jagruti, we have to thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. I hope this thank was you. helpful. Iman, we request you to stay on. There's sure. more left on the show. We need to take a very quick break. But before that, did you know that in a major relief for two-wheeler owners, the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority, or IRDA, has introduced a long-term motor third-party insurance policy with a three-year term. So this means means that two-wheeler owners need not renew their motor insurance every year. Also, the total premium charge for the third-party coverage will now be thrice the annual premium earlier. And this premium will actually not be revised upwards or downwards during the term of the policy. So let's take that break. Still ahead is our viewer call-in segment, Can I Afford It? Welcome back. You're watching Money, Money, Money. Before we start answering our viewers' queries, let me hand it over to Manasvi Gilani, who joins us for Mythbusters. New fund offering, or NFO, as they're fondly known, is what we've picked for you today. NFOs are similar to IPOs in the sense that both are avenues for companies to raise funds, but yet very different and attractive. And that's why most commonly misunderstood as the best bet for new investors. But what you need to know is that NFO is a fund with no track record and for a new investor, it may not be the best bet. In fact, experts at FinTotal Mutual Fund suggest that you opt for an index fund or a good fund with a minimum three-year track record. The only person the NFO is good for is the broker since the commissions on NFOs tend to be higher. Secondly, if you think NFOs offer you better returns, then remember that new fund offerings and existing funds both have the opportunity of gaining or losing the money in this volatile market. Experts at Codex Securities suggest that a mutual fund gain is linked to the performance of the securities that the scheme has invested in. The fund's NAV rises proportionally to the reflect the rise in the prices of the securities held by it. So NFOs may not always give you better returns than your other investments. Lastly, you need to note that NFOs are not cheaper and safer than existing funds in the market. Just because the sound of 10 rupees value of the NFO sounds tempting, NFOs do not come cheaper than the existing fund. We end up believing that they are cheaper way of investing in the fund. The NFOs might not have entry lows, but they also but they have hidden costs. And as far as safety goes, investing in NFOs is investing without any track record of the fund performance. And financial planners, in fact, believe that high NAV speaks volumes about the past performance of the existing fund. Also importantly, the regulator had come down tracking on the agents that sold 10 rupees NAV NFO as a cheap product. So beware and invest wisely. All right, Manasi, thanks so much for that. Now on to Can I Afford It? If you're looking for a bit of extravagance in your life, well, we're the people to call and our expert will tell you if you can afford it or not. Joining us first up is Prithul Bhargava. Hi, Prithul, what's your question? Uh, basically, I wanted to check if I can afford the Bose speakers that I have in mind. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about how much you earn, what savings you have? Yeah, so basically, uh, I, I earn somewhere around 40 per month and my outflow, that is my expenses, is somewhere around 21. And currently, I have a savings balance of uh, a little over 1 lakh. Okay. And my insurance is also adequate enough. Okay, and how much will these Bose speakers cost you and how will you pay for it? So basically the both speakers that I'm looking out for will cost me somewhere around 26 and I was thinking of uh, putting in uh, putting in the same from my savings. Okay, Heman, what do you think? Can Prizal go ahead? Well, no, I'm afraid no, uh, because you know, he has a saving of less than around a lakh. Uh, I always believe that one must create an emergency fund because you never know when you're faced with some hmm. exigency. So I think you can wait for some more time and uh, maybe for a few months and then buy it, but he must create an emergency reserve and then consider in buying it. All right, Prithul, so those are words from the vice for you. For now, your request is denied. Joining us next up is Manavi Gagru, who calls in from Mumbai. Hi, Manavi, what's your question? My income is 60,000 per month, and my expenses are around 45,000 mm. per month. I have a savings of 50,000, but I do not have any insurance. I'm a model, and I need to get a new portfolio short, so can I afford a portfolio? So, uh, Malavi, how, how much is this photo shoot going to cost you and how will you pay for it? 
30,000 and I am planning to pay for it with my savings. Okay, Hemant, uh, she's a model, she says. She needs to get a photo shoot done, but uh, I guess her savings are just about enough. Is it advisable? I think considering that she wants to be a professional model and uh, this portfolio is definitely going to help us mm. a great deal in getting assignment, even though I think uh, she hardly has any saving, I would say that she can go ahead with that because this would really help her in enhancing her income and furthering her career right now. All right, Manavi, go ahead, enjoy your photo shoot. And as Heyman says, it's not an expense, it's an investment in your career. Finally, we have an email query from Kumar Gadgil, who writes to us from Pune. He says he earns about 75,000 rupees a month. His expenses are in the region of about 30,000 odd. So far, he has managed to collect about 2.5 lakh rupees. And he now wants to know if he can afford to spend 35,000 rupees on buying a Mont Blanc bank as a retirement gift for his father. He's going to pay for it from his savings, Heyman. Uh, of, he? of course he Of course he has a saving of around two and a half lakhs today mm -hmm. and our parents do so much for us in our life and this is a, this is a time where he should actually not even think for a moment go ahead and buy and and present it to his father all right kumar so go ahead enjoy that and i hope your father will like it as well thanks so much for calling heyman we need to thank you thanks so much as always for joining us viewers do you remember you can keep writing to us at money 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 at network 18 online.com you can also find us on twitter write to cnbc tv 18 news you can use the hashtag money and you can also log on to youtube to catch all of our previous episodes thanks so much for watching we'll see you again next week